suffering is a human reality and we should not turn away from it. Mm -hmm. But there's a way that you describe of almost, if I could use the word, lean into it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the suffering can be transformed into the joy of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So behind me sits two large paintings, uh, monumental paintings called Walking on Water. And they, they, the, the series began after the 311 catastrophe in Japan, uh, where so many uh, villages were washed away uh, with you know, people, uh, orphan children in uh, uh, grade schools up the hill. Um, and and it, was, it, was, it was unlike any, anything you would ever want to see, boats turned upside down on top of houses. And um, so I began a series, I, as, as I have often done, um, I did a series on Columbine uh, after Columbine High School shootings. And, um, and then of course, 9-11, where I, I was unwittingly be, uh, a Ground Zero resident uh, three blocks away from the towers and my children became Ground Zero children. So, um, you know, I have been responding to these events. And after 311, I began a series called Walking Water. Um, these paintings use pulverized minerals, uh, such as azurite. So they're literally hand, hand uh, pulverized, um, and then mixed with animal skin hide and, and then pulled over. I painted these outside. Um, because they're so large and um, they, they, they are kind of like ghost images of um, creating, if you could imagine, um, you know, creating a um, uh, landscape uh, of an um, estuary landscape in front of you. Um, that's what, because they're, the pigments are very sand-like uh, minerals and they're flowing in water and then you're using, you know, various means to uh, create imagery out of it. Um, so these lit literally rivers, streams happen within the painting, and and you're you're trying to intuit, intuit this as 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 if to ask, can we walk on water? Um, so my art tends to, you know, capture. Uh, the intuitive response to something tragic or something that is haunting. And, and yet I, I do dare to ask um, that, that my paintings become an emblem of hope, that, that there is something about working through that and facing that reality head, head on uh, can allow an artist to articulate something of the new creation. Um, we have to remember that Jesus in post-resurrection appearance still has his wounds, uh, nail marks uh, that is still visible. Uh, Thomas was invited to touch them, even though he didn't, he just worshiped. Um, so, so that reality is both haunting and, and, and some, some, there's, there's a staggering promise there, I think. In that, whatever we go through in life, in uh, trauma, darkness, uh, struggle, setbacks, those are markers told anew if we allow them to be. And any trauma therapy will tell you that, um, the, you know, you spend the first six months trying to convince the, the, the client that trauma is not something that you can simply erase out of your life. Trauma, you can't run away from, it makes it worse. You have to understand that it's going to be etched in the body that, that you inhabit. And once you accept that, then the therapy can begin, you know. And, and so I spend a lot of time uh, because I have been traumatized, um, trying to work through my own trauma through painting. And then I got to a point uh, in writing this book in particular uh, and, and reading actually, you know, N.T. Wright's theology, uh, which, which is so staggering. Uh, to think about his resurrection, that, you know, theology, which actually states that Jesus, you know, it's not, not just Jesus resurrected, that it's that Jesus stays human <laughs> in post-resurrection, in new creation. That's the staggering message, which means that our humanity and our brokenness and our, whatever we suffer on this side of eternity, if we can look through the pain and, and create something out of that will define that humanity on the other side of creation. 
that new creation is a dance that we are invited to. And actually, God chooses not to act until his creatures begin to, by faith, create into the fissures of the world. That's, that's like so mind boggling. But I think about this as an artist all the time. And I intuited it very early on in, in, in my journey. And, and I, uh, you know, I'm saying, well, you know, the redemption message is, is, is fantastic. I mean, I, I, I live by it, I die by it, right? But what happens after the resurrection, right? What, what is my role? Is it to tell other people about what happened to redeem? Yes, you know, but is that the entire message? You know, what I talk about in the book as plumbing theology, you know, we, we, we get these tools to fix the pipe. Uh, at, you know, every time we go to church and we come home and fix the pipe and we tell our neighbors and we say, well, you know, come to church with me so you can learn to fix the pipes. Uh, and, and very rarely, right, you hear a message that talks about what's going through the pipes. And, you know, this, this wine of new creation is flowing back into our lives through the pipes. That's why we're fixing the pipes. But we don't talk about that. And we don't help people to grow imaginatively, like have sanctified imagination and trained ways that we can actualize what God has given us in, in creation to create into the new creation. So, so the broken earth is the material through which we create into the future of God's world. But, but we, you know, that, that, that promise, which, which is hinted in a lot of the mystics, Catholic, you know, theologians uh, of the past, um, but, but also in 20th century, Jürgen Moltmann and, you know, Miroslav Wolf, who I, I have the privilege of conversing with, and, and of course, uh, N.T. Wright and Alan Davis of Duke, these people are talking about this, but we, you know, we, we didn't have a way to frame it. And so my, my book, I actually, I hope is a, is a, one of the ways that we can, we can usher in this thinking about the new creation theology.